everybody, and welcome back to The Hobby Musician. You're joining us for our second episode in the mini-series where we're building our own custom pickups from scratch. Now, if you haven't seen our previous episode, make sure you click the link at the top because that's going to talk through how we went about making all of our measurements and ultimately 3D printing all of the like housing physical components for the pickups that we're making. And you're going to want to watch that because today we are talking magnets and wiring. And to get things started off, we're going to start with our two bobbin pieces. And as we said in the last episode, this is where we've designed and measured out the exact hole spacing that we want to insert our magnets for these pickups. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our bottom bobbin and the two extra holes that we put into here, we put in specifically because we needed to add little metal eyelets and these little grommets or eyelets are going to be what we attach both our signal and our ground wires to and it's just better to have kind of the metallic surface here um, we we specifically modeled and, and measured them so that they would fit with this so all i've got to do is i'm just putting in putting in uh, on from one side putting in our eyelets and then I got this little tool just at a little craft store, uh, anywhere that kind of sells these things you can make. I think you, you put these in jewelry or belts or things like that. But um, this is just a crimp um, tool that once I go in, let's see, I want to put it this way. Um, once I, I push through the grommets like you just saw me do, I can take this tool and as I come through and I squeeze it, and then I'm gonna rotate and squeeze again and rotate and squeeze again. If I go around, what that does is it now curls the underside of the grommet out so that it's permanently fixed in there. And I'll do the same thing to our other one. And again, just kind of put it in there, squeeze, I turn, squeeze, kind of go around as much as I can around this. And by doing that, now, uh, regardless of which side you look at, now we've got two uh, anchor points that we can then come back later and solder our copper wire to uh, for the two the two wires that need to come out of here. Now to get right to it, the rest of the holes are going to be for our magnets. Now specifically for these pickups, I chose Alnico 5 magnets, but you can go to the forums, blog posts, anywhere you want. There's a thousand and one different kinds of magnets that you could choose. Some pickups are designed to use a single rectangular bar magnet. Lots of, of uh, pickups that you find are designed specifically for kind of these cylindrical rod shaped magnets. Um, and I chose them for a couple of reasons. They're, they're actually pretty simple to work with. And what we can do with these is ultimately we're going to insert them uh, into each of the holes and then sandwich these two bobbins by pushing the magnets all the way through. Now, I want to give you a hot tip for how to kind of work with these things. If you look into building your own pickups, you're going to very quickly find that it's very important to make sure that the polarities, the, the north pole, south pole of your magnets are all aligned. So for instance, if we make this um, pickup, when we look at it, we want to make sure that we have inserted these magnets so that all of the same ends are pointing up or the same ends are pointing down. And sure, you could get yourself kind of one of those actual compasses that you take out on a hike somewhere, and you could take that compass and bring it into these magnets and find which end is the north and which end is the south, and make a little mark. But I will tell you this, it's not actually important to know which is the north or the south. It's important to know which are the same ends. And this is what I'm going to mean. Um, I don't have a compass. And so I can't come and tell you which is the north end or which is the south end. But I'm going to show you a trick that's going to let you know what all of the one type of ends are versus all the other type. So I ordered these... Um, magnets here. And what I'll do too, if you're following along at home, I'll go ahead and put some affiliate links down below the video that have, um, you know, quick access to any of the things, the parts we use, the winding machine, the copper wire, all of it, so that you can find exactly what you're seeing on these episodes. So here's the trick. I'm going to take all of these magnet rods that I have, and I'm going to start to line them up. And what I mean by that is I'm going to bring them close. And pretty soon, I want to demonstrate here, pretty soon, if I, if I come in like this, they're actually fighting each other. You can see they're kind of going in circles. But if I were to take this one and turn it around and bring it in, 
Now it snaps, just like magnets do. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line up every single magnet so that, okay, it's not that end, there it is. I'm gonna snap them all together in a straight line. So all these tiny little magnets are just gonna make one long bar magnet. And they kinda, it's pretty easy to do this. They kinda wanna naturally help you as you start to do this. So uh, all the magnets in the pack that I bought are now, now perfectly lined up into one gigantic bar. And here's what you can do. Since we know that magnets operate on an opposites attract, same size repel, if they're all attracted, that means at any junction, one of the ends is one polarity, north or south, and the other end is the other polarity. That's the only reason they're connecting. So what I'm gonna do is I took my Sharpie marker and I make a mark on this outer end. So I make a little black dot on the outer end. And if I take this magnet off and set it down, the end that's out is the same end as the end I just took off. So I can put a black mark there and take this one off. Put it down, black mark, take it off, put it down, and then if that, I'll just reset that there. And black mark, and on and on until I have marked every single one of these magnets with with the dot. And what that allows me to know is that if I go back and check these magnets, every single end with a black dot will repel every other end of a black dot and attract the ends without. So when you're dealing with a guitar that maybe has more than one pickup, neck pickup, bridge pickup, it's pretty important to know and to be able to control which end of the polarity you have pointing up. So on one pickup, we're gonna have all the black dots pointing up and wind the, the copper wire in one direction. And then on their second pickup, we're gonna put all the black dots pointing down and we're gonna wire the, or wind the wire in the opposite direction, just so that when we put both pickups into the same circuit, we don't get interference and we actually get some hum canceling. So what I'm going to do now is I am now going to insert all of these rods into the holes like we um, like we have here. So I'm going to, hold on a second, I'm going to go from the bottom. So this is my bottom bobbin and I'm going to press, let's see here, press from the bottom and I may need to get my sandpaper back out and widen these holes just a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to press through so that when we ultimately get them, um, all 10 magnets, oh, actually, I should have done it that way. <laughs> that was easier. All 10 magnets are going to be pressed through. Um, ooh, there we go. All 10 magnets are going to be pressed through the bottom and the top. And we're going to have everything lined up just like this. And then I'm going to come back and put a touch, just a drop of super glue on the top and on the bottom so that they hold themselves in place. So I don't wanna get halfway through the wind and one of the bobbins falls off. So I'm gonna cut the camera, get everything switched back up so that you can then uh, start to see how we're gonna wind the copper wire. So the next time you see me, I'll, put, I'll have these magnets placed in there and we'll be ready to wind these pickups. So, all right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, everybody, welcome back, and welcome back to this um, unusual camera angle for our channel. Um, we're all set to now do the second part of this episode, which is wind our pickups with the copper wire. And I want to give you a, an overview of what we got going on here, because I know a lot has changed since a second ago. Uh, essentially, what I've got is I made a couple wooden stands where I was able to attach and make a, a mount for my spool of copper wire. Um, and you know, this is 42 gauge copper wire, which is a very common gauge for a lot of pickups to be wound. Um, it's incredibly, incredibly fine. So for some of the other things that I'm gonna explain to you, I'm actually gonna put up photos because I realized as I was working on them, there was absolutely no way it was gonna come across in a video. Um, so we've got our copper wire. Now on the second wooden mount you see here, this is our little hand crank uh, winding machine. And this particular one was about like $30, $35. You can certainly get motorized ones, uh, ones that have, you know, really um, intricate controls with speed controls and all this kind of stuff. But one of the things that I really want to emphasize is if you're in this to just 
try your hand at making some pickups. Um, putting, you know, 30 bucks into a hand crank machine and on the front here, I can see it, it just has a counter. And as you go, it counts. Every one crank of the handle is eight rotations. So you can kind of get pretty high spin numbers uh, with, you know, relatively moderate um, cranks. They're both held to my table here with C-clamps. And what I've done is I've taken the copper wire, one end of that copper wire, and I've actually, it's, it's coming off of the spool. And what I've done is I've already tied it to one of the grommets. And this is where I'll put up a picture. You can see it's incredibly fine, but um, that's what we need. We need to tie off one of the ends before we wind it. And then we need to wind the entire pickup and then tie off the other end to our second grommet. Now you can see here on the face of this, it's just kind of a cardboard, um, a cardboard mount face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring our pickup, which has one end already, like I said, one end of the copper wires attached. And I'm going to do just a, a hand crank here. I want to get a, a visual onto where the center of that kind of is, where it's going to spin on the center. And then I want to bring this up and very carefully, I'm going to try to mount as close to as center as I possibly can on this. Now, what this is gonna do, it's just um, it's some, some duct tape, you know, white colored duct tape that I've got on there. And what this has now done is my pickup spindle is connected to my hand crank. And what I have is a very soft, this is an, a piece of an old cotton t-shirt that I've cut a really small strip. And I'm gonna come to this copper wire, which is now running from the spool affixed, attached to the spindle, and I'm going to be able to then sandwich or hold this wire uh, in this piece. I'm going to hold it through the piece of t-shirt because it's so fine. If I don't put, if I'm going to very, very lightly put a little bit of tension on this wire so that it holds it straight. As this turns, I want that wire to be held taut so that as the, the winds go around, they're tightly wound. If you let this loose and floppy, you're gonna have all kinds of wasted space in there. So just to give you an idea um, really uh, carefully here, I'm gonna reset my counter. So I'm right now to getting ready to start counting. Um, you can find all over the internet, there are tons of people with tons of different opinions about how many winds a pickup should have. There's even differences between um, if you have a neck pickup versus a bridge pickup. But honestly, anything in the range of about 5,000 winds to 10,000 winds, you're going to find these companies producing pickups. Um, for me personally, in this project, I want around a 7,000 wind for my bridge and an 8,000 wind for my, my neck. So this one, I'm going to try my 7,000, and if that works, I'll do the other one off camera. Um, but that's what my counter is. Now it's, it's reset to zero, so now as I start to crank, I can keep count of how many spins um, of wire have been placed onto our pickup. So just to give you an idea, I want to just carefully, I'm very lightly holding it here, and I'm just trying to slowly, gently do a few winds. Now what I wanna do, I wanna get about 10 to 15 winds. I'm going incredibly slow right here at the beginning. And we'll talk through kind of the, the rest of the process here in a second. But I'm just trying to watch that, yeah, everything, I wanna make sure that I'm lined up here the the wire coming off the spool is okay yeah and that's that's going pretty good so yeah and if i look over i'm almost i've almost hit about 10 winds yeah this is good i just want to get a good start and you can start to see so now i can take breaks i can leave the the t-shirt there uh hanging on the the copper wire as you're winding, if you're doing this, um, you're actually gonna see me, I'm gonna switch over to a time-lapse. I'm gonna pop in some uh, AirPods and just listen to some music because you do not wanna go super fast. You wanna go at a decent, reasonable pace because you need to feel in your hands. Sometimes the copper wire comes off the spool, there might be a twist or a turn in it, and it might bump or um, 
you know, worst case scenario, it might snap. And if it snaps, you gotta cut off the wire and start over. You need one continuous wire for the entire pickup. So that's why I recommend, if you have an, an, a number in mind, I wanna hit 7,000, so I'm just gonna put on some, some music and slowly every few hundred turns, I'll, I'll pause. I'll maybe shake out my hands, um, look at it. You'll see me, I'll probably use one eye because sometimes I can squint one eye and I can see the wire better. Um, but that's what I'm gonna start to do here in a second. I'm also gonna come back and I'm gonna put some more tape. I'm gonna put a piece of tape that goes around the edge, all four edges um, towards the mount. That's gonna help shield and protect from accidentally getting the wire going behind the bobbin. Um, so what you're gonna see, I'm gonna fade this out, cut over to a time lapse, and you'll see the whole wind, and we'll come back and talk about it at the end. So, all right, I'll see you in a little bit. everybody we are officially done um, as you can probably see in that last section there were a few times where I noticed that as I was spinning I could feel that the wire would like catch one of the edges of the bobbin as it went through um, and I could feel that because as I said I was putting a very light amount of tension and it was okay because you could see that I could immediately stop I could wind it back a couple of turns find you know where the loop happened unloop it, get everything lined back up, and continue on with it. The other thing I would do is, as I was listening to music, I would kind of every, about every song or so, when a song would end, I would stop just to check. I wanted to make sure that I was winding um, the sides as evenly as possible. It's not perfect, but it's, it's good enough. Um, and the other thing, you know, you just gotta take breaks. Um, I really recommend, if you're gonna try it the way that I did with a hand crank machine, you're gonna wanna realize that whole thing honestly took 40 to 45 minutes in real time, uh, even though you're watching that time lapse. So it takes, it takes some, some dedication to do a project like this, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with what we, what we end up with if you're willing to kind of go through that, that um, process. At the very end, the other thing we did, as we mentioned, um, I took the last piece of wire. So when I had gotten my 7,000 winds that I wanted, I cut the wire from the, the spool, and then I just took tweezers and I fed and looped the um, end of that wire through the other grommet. At the beginning of the video, we tied off the first end to one grommet, and then we did the whole wind we tie off the other end to the second one. So this will allow us to solder in our two wires uh, when we start to get ready to, to put this into the housing and ultimately install it. So right now, the next phase of this project is to wax pot these uh, pickups. And if you wanna check that out, click the link at the top, that'll take you to our next episode. But uh, after that, it's getting down to the time where we'll be able to play these in the bass. So I hope you got something out of watching that. Thank you so much. Uh, and until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.